Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm watching the finale to Obi-Wan Kenobi. The last episode was probably my favorite of the entire season, and it was because there was, um, I don't want to like harp on the writing because I think, I think it's been hit or miss a little bit this season, but the, the writing and the, the juxtaposition that we had of the sparring match and them like kind of integrating that into the decision making that Obi-Wan has towards handling Vader, I thought was fantastic. Um, and, and definitely the sparring match itself, like felt like it was right out of that era. And I know some people were not okay with the de-aging, but I thought it looked great personally, but like definitely like their, their fighting styles, like there was like a lot of youth and vigor in that. And I, I thought it looked great. I thought it was beautiful. It was fantastic. The, 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 the lightness that it had because it was taking place in daylight on Coruscant and then the darkness of like being inside the bunker on Jabim, I think was great. The correlation between the light and the dark was amazing. Um, and, and I, I really liked the acting that we got out of Ewan and Hayden. I think it was fantastic. That was what I really wanted this whole time was that interaction because like being a fan of Clone Wars and getting a lot of Obi-Wan and Anakin, you know, like, I feel like live action with this guy right here, like, 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 it's, 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 it's the thing that, like, I, I've needed the entire series. And I'm happy that we finally got it. Um, and it gave it a little bit more emotional weight all over. The whole storyline, like, everything kind of got a little bit heavier um, from that episode. And I loved the correlation between those scenes, but then also I, I really liked that finally we got a story from Reva. Now, we knew the first episode after we saw the younglings that she was one of the younglings. So it wasn't a surprise that that was really revealed in the last episode. But what I do like was is that you could kind of see like a little, I don't want to say a break in her character, but you could see like a softness happen and to where like, you know, she's she's kind of almost having like a therapy session through a door to Obi-Wan. And it wasn't that she got soft, but she softened. I still think that she's formidable um, because her anger fuels her. Um, and, and as you know, like with anybody, when somebody's angry, they could pretty much just do about anything. But I'm, I'm happy that her story finally got that emotional weight that I was looking for. Um, cause some people were like, you're not supposed to care about her. Yes, you are. They wouldn't have shown you her as a youngling in the beginning. Like you're supposed to care. Um, and I, th I feel like, too, because of the sparring match, if they had sprinkled in moments of her remembering a blue lightsaber, whether it was a traumatic flash or not, right? If they had done that every single episode, when that sparring match happened, it would have clicked like she's remembering either Obi-Wan or Anakin. And of course, we see in episode five, she's remembering Anakin. They could have bring that back for this episode and her having like, uh, a teaching lesson with Obi-Wan where she's remembering the blue lightsaber then. I mean, Monday morning quarterback on that one, but like, I just like feel like they could have done a better job at, at integrating her into that story. And it, and it would have really brought her story full, full circle, I think, in, in this series. Because I think I've heard that she's getting her own spinoff, which I think would actually be great if they did the Grand Inquisitor and all the Inquisitors kind of going after her because they're Jedi hunters, right? They're, they're force user hunters. That it would make sense for her to go and want to protect other force users if she has a redemptive arc. But like, if she went and did that, then of course she would have all these confrontations with the Grand Inquisitor or Inquisitors. And I think that that would be an amazing show. I, I really do think the Inquisitors should have had their own separate show um, because they, there's so much evil that they could do with that. And there's so much darkness that they could, you know, and they could really go into the Sith backstories and the Sith, the Sith temple and lore and all that. I think that that would be a nuts show. I would love that show. And there's also no emotional stakes going into this episode because everyone makes it out alive. They just do, right? The only person we don't really know anything about and where she goes in the future is Reba. So if anyone has you know, a, a moment with Luke, it really can only be Reba. You, you can't have Obi-Wan talking to him. You can't have Leia talking to him. You can't have Vader on Tatooine. Like there's so many things that you can't do because of A New Hope, which is completely fine. Um, if it's Reba that talks to Luke, then that's the only plausible kind of interaction I could see him having. <laughs> that poor little actor, he's gotten some screen time, but not really anything else. <laughs> And I would say too, is that like, she kind of showed 
Um, I, I, I wouldn't say necessarily that she has like fighting skills against Vader because he just toyed with her and, and, and he used defense against her. So he kind of was exactly the Vader we would have wanted and hoped, which is kind of like, get away from me, you're nothing. And I feel like I don't, and I don't know where the story could go for Vader in this episode. Um, I'm, I'm ready for surprises. I really am. The one thing that I think, there's a couple questions that I think were lingering, like how did she get out of the temple? Um, was she healed by somebody who's maybe small and green with big ears? Uh, I think that that would be adorable. Um, did Quinlan Boss help her out of the temple? Um, I think those shreds of humanity that she was shown in those moments will come full circle and really help her character in this episode. If that's even what's in it, they might just be done with her. I don't know. And then lastly, I think the thing that has been on a lot of people's minds since the first couple episodes with, you know, Obi-Wan really trying to commune with Qui-Gon. Are we going to get Qui-Gon? Because I, I don't know if I can emotionally take that. I, I want it. I want it so badly. I want him to connect to the Force again. I want him to talk to Qui-Gon. He could talk to Yoda, but, like, I think Qui-Gon is the one that's going to, like, get him fully back into the Force and take him into the next couple years in which, you know, is before he interacts with Luke and sacrifices himself. Uh, I think, I think, I think having that, that communication with Qui-Gon is the thing that he needs to be full Obi-Wan Kenobi. Okay, guys, let's get into it. Oh, and one last time. Okay, are we going to get some Qui-Gon? Yes, definitely. It's never been right, but I mean, they wouldn't, they wouldn't do that to us, right? They wouldn't. They wouldn't sprinkle that out and then not give it to us, right? I'd be so sad if we don't get Qui-Gon. I really hang my emotional hat on Star Wars. Like, it, it really affects me in the deepest way possible. All right, guys. Let's do this. Oh, I don't know why I'm so nervous. Something you want to say? I have something to say. Oh boy. You have what's left when I'm done. I like when somebody takes care of the bully. You're looking for a friend. He's only. She got there quick, considering they're still in space. Something about that march going up the bridge is just amazing. Increase firepower. At once, Lord Vader. Are they gonna do like a mind force communication through the ships? Hyperdrive's almost ready. Move all power to the rear shields. We'll head for Tessie. We're not gonna make it to Tessin, are we? Motivator shot. Power couplings are bad. Where's R2 when you need him? I really adore her. She keeps their minds off of her. Maybe I should borrow her too. Oh. Howdy. I didn't think we were gonna get like a scene with Luke. We need a new belt for the speeder. Certain somebody broke the last one. Your uncle's a patient man. I'm not that patient. <laughs> Facetious Luke. We love him. No, no, babe, you can't just leave me here. I'm the one that Vader wants. What happened to all of us staying together? You've spent ten years protecting the Jedi. This is my chance to return that favor. You are all the future. You are the future. You're what needs to survive. You must promise me that you get her home, Haja, as soon as I'm in the clear. You have my word. Although I know the word of a liar and a fake Jedi may not mean much to you, it's good to know. <laughs> His character certainly developed over the course of a couple episodes. Go on in. What is it? Come on inside. Ben is gone. Who's that? Okay. 
I'm not leaving my home. At least here we have a chance. I'm not putting anyone else in danger, Owen. Clear enough. You and me. She'll come when the suns go down. It's best we get positioned now. Well, I'm a fan of Aunt Baru. I have something for you. Broken thumb before we got out. She would have wanted you to have it. <laughs> that is really freaking touching. I'm tempted. Well, I wasn't going to give you a blaster, Leia. <laughs> Absolutely adore this relationship. Name your first son after me. <laughs> I promise. I have to face him, Master. Whether he dies or I do. Ugh, toying with my emotions. It's not about us, is it? You want to do it. He needs to do it. Broken. There are not many leaders left. People follow you. Don't stop. Just get started. <laughs> I am sweating so much. We're tracking him in the escape craft. That's him. My lord, we must continue our pursuit of the insurgent. We cannot prioritize one lone Jedi. He is not just any Jedi. Yeah, no doubt. Follow Kenobi. At once, Lord Vader. His need for victory. <laughs> this looks like it's like one little craft in a net big ship. It makes it look even smaller. Oh, beautiful shot. The Tuscans are on the hunt again. They're raiding farms along the wastes, so stay in here. Oh, that's a good excuse. I'm not afraid. I know. Everything's gonna be fine. Prepare my ship. I will face him alone. Can I just tell you how great Ewan McGregor is at, like, acting with his face and his eyes? Blah, blah. <laughs> She's obviously still hurt. Did she fix her lightsaber? Oof. God, Vader needs his own series. He really does. Have you come to destroy me, Obi-Wan? I will do what I must. It's that fighting stance we know and love. Then you will die. <laughs> Oh my gosh, that gave me chills. She can't possibly have come here to kill anyone. Like, I don't want to believe it. I love that we're getting this side of Baru. So beautiful. Physical, Obi Wan. I love it. Oh. Your strength has returned. Yes, it has. But the weakness still oh. remains. 
Wow, Vader is so strong. And that is why you will always lose. That was so cool. Save the day. Oh, damn. God, she can barely even walk. Fueled by revenge. I mean, we know nothing happens to Luke, but I'm really curious as to what happens with Luke. Nope, find your power within them. Let's go! He's got a sense in. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, Obi-Wan Kenobi! Holy shit! Oh, that's my boy! <laughs> I'll come back, buddy. Barely breathe. Oh, 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 oh. The music. The wheezing. Again, again. I am breathless right now. Breathless. Absolutely breathless. Anakin. Anakin is gone. I am what remains. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Anakin. For all of it. <laughs> I'm not your failure, Obi-Wan. You've been through Anakin Skywalker. I did. I did. <laughs> the same way I will destroy you. Goodbye. Darth. He didn't want to call him Anakin and he didn't want to call him Vader. That's why he called him Darth. Oh, <sighs> that was such an amazing scene. I think we've needed that for so long. Now that he's in tune with the Force, he can sense Luke. I love it. Oh, 
maybe she'll have a flash of the younglings and not be able to do it. I mean, obviously she doesn't do it, but come on, girl, remember. Remember the younglings. Don't do it. I know you won't, but don't do it. See, we'll search till we find him. Ben! She brought him back. <laughs> see, I told you, you start caring about a character. Makes a world of difference. Have I become him? Nope. You've chosen not to. Who you become now. It was up to you. Now you're free. I think we were going to be on least fire. We will destroy everything in our path until he is found. You seem agitated, my friend. He will not evade me again. I wonder if your thoughts are clear on this, Lord Vader. Perhaps your feelings for your old master have left you weakened. Kenobi means nothing. Doesn't seem that way, huh? I serve only you, my master. <sighs> what an epic shot. She ready to be part of everything now? <laughs> Her gloves! <laughs> is that a holster? Sure is. She's accessorizing. I love it. <laughs> it's a good mom. So who is it today? More cousins? Is it Obi Wan? Lola. Oh. <laughs> to separate the young lady from her drawing. She's more excited about Lola. <laughs> I fear for her future. The Empire grows stronger. And bolder. Well, if you ever need my help again, you know where to find me. Sure do. Leia, when I said before that I didn't know your parents, Princess Leia Organa, you are wise, discerning, kind hearted. These are qualities that came from your mother, but you're also. Passionate and fearless, forthright. And these are gifts from your father. Both were exceptional people who bore an exceptional daughter. And I wish I could tell you more. Okay. You don't have to. She's got exceptional parents anyway. God, that music just made me break. If you ever need help from a tired old man, but we must be careful. No one must know, or it could endanger us both. Goodbye. Obi-Wan. Goodbye, Princess. May the Force be with you. 
<laughs> I've been needing the force theme for a while. <laughs> what are you uh, doing here? I thought you were going to keep your distance. And I will. You know, you were right. He just needs to be a boy. The future will take care of itself. The only protection he needs now, Owen, is you. And Boo. Dan? You want to meet him? Might. Don't like that idea. I guess if he only meets him once and it's old Ben out in the Dune Sea, then there's not much of a memory that's lasting there. Hello there. We had to wait six episodes for that. Master Qui-Gon. <laughs> well, it took you long enough. <laughs> Beginning to think you'd never come. I was always here, Obi-Wan. You just were not ready to see me. Come on, you've got a ways to go. <laughs> That was emotional. I know at the beginning I said the last episode is my favorite episode. This one was my favorite episode. Absolutely my favorite episode. Not only do we see Obi-Wan full-blown Obi-Wan taking on Vader full strength and beating him and besting him but the scene with the helmet slashed. Man, that was gorgeous. That was such a gorgeous moment. What a great moment because it, it kind of like when he says, you know, Darth Vader you know, murdered your father. He's not lying. He's not lying. He betrayed and murdered Anakin. Um, a lot of things tied a lot together, and I was really happy about it, especially Reva. I don't know where she's going to go from here, but I'm really happy that she had the moment of seeing herself as a youngling as Luke is unconscious and making the decision to not go through with it because she decides to be different in that moment. And I thought that that was beautiful. And Moses, Moses in that moment between Obi-Wan and Reva, the performance Moses gave with the emotion, woo, woo, that got me, that got me. She's, I, I hope she has her own series. And even though nothing went the way that I thought it was gonna go, it went beautifully, more, better than I could have thought. So I'm happy about that. I'm I'm happy when things exceed expectations, but I'm I'm happy when things kind of are buttoned and tied together. Um, we got our goodbye with Leia, and you know, we it kind of set up being able to call for him in the future, and for them to be careful about their communications. I love that she's wearing the boots and the 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 blaster uh, holster, everything that's very Leia Organa, and I love it. And I love. That her parents, that Bail, and I, I'm sorry that I don't know her mother's name, but like that they're fantastic parents to her. And especially her mother, like just was just like, it looks perfect because she knows her daughter. She knows that that's her. Uh, I, I, I love that. And the influence that we now know that Ben Kenobi had over Leia, him calling her princess and then talking to her about her parents with Leia's theme playing in the background was just beautiful. <laughs> uh, I know if they played too much on nostalgia and the themes, like the, the musical themes, that, you know, they probably would have gotten in trouble by a lot of fans anyways, but like, I love that how they utilized it in this episode. It was perfect. It wasn't too much. It was just enough. You know, the first time that we see um, Vader tell the emperor like kenobi is no more you know he's nothing to me and they have that pan out of him sitting on his throne of mustafar and it has the the um imperial march playing i thought was chef's kiss like that picture could be on the wall behind me it was gorgeous a lot of the shots that we got were gorgeous you know the the twin sons um in, in on tatooine over top of um the lars plantation gorgeous you know the the aerial shots of the lightsaber battle 
in between the rocks, which that whole thing was mind blowing. Like you knew that like he wasn't going to just be underneath the pile of rocks, get out and then go back to Tatooine, but like blowing the rocks off of himself and then lifting the rocks and throwing them at Vader. And it just showed the full power of Obi-Wan Kenobi. And I love how we got to see kind of Vader show his power in the last episode and Obi-Wan show his power in this episode. Um, the fact that we got the Emperor, like, I, I, I'm not surprised by that. Like, you know, they're, they're, as long as Ian McDiarmid is allowing himself to be the Emperor, he's going to show up in these things, and I think that's fantastic. Um, but I, I really thought they were going to end it without a communication from Qui-Gon. And it wasn't the communication I thought it was going to be. I thought it was going to help him muster his strength. And in that moment, he saw Luke and Leia. It, it wasn't, he saw people who were present and alive. He didn't see somebody who was dead and lamenting on that, um, which I thought was amazing. So when he's full and he's whole and he's journeying on to what will be, you know, the last couple of years of his life is when he sees Qui-Gon. And I didn't know if we were just going to get a voice or if we were going to get Liam Neeson, but it was so nice to see him again. And it wasn't in the capacity of like, a lesson learned it was more like a welcome to an old friend <laughs> i'm so happy that we got that oh my god i'm a mess i'm a mess freaking mess oh man this this <laughs> This episode was the one that, like, it, I think, where I think some of the writing was not great the whole season, and some of the things that happened, there were holes and questions in it, and, you know, we don't get to see how Reva made it out of the temple. I don't know if we needed to see that. I think um, it would have helped with a little bit of emotional weight, but I think her seeing herself as a youngling in Luke and choosing to not kill him um, was, it was powerful enough. I, I was kind of worried when they had him actually, when they had Obi-Wan actually talking to Luke, I was like, oh God, like, you know, obviously Luke's got to get the toy somehow because we see it in the future, but we don't know what the interaction was other than that iconic line. And then we know Luke has the ship. So it might've been like a very small exchange that like he would not remember in the future. Um, I don't think it was lasting enough for him to go, oh, remember that one time that guy gave me that ship? I, I don't I don't think that that's a memory that he would be able to recall very easily. So it was perfect. It was just enough to establish that he knows who Ben, old Ben is in the Dune Sea. Like he knows who that is because now we see Obi-Wan traveling into the Dune Sea. Um, I think that that it was a perfect amount of dialogue between the two without ruining uh, a new hope. <laughs> you know, and I, I don't want to pick apart something that's so beautiful. And there's really nothing that I can pick apart on this episode. I feel like it was it was a complete story. Like there was, there was no, I have no nitpicking, which I normally have nitpicking when it comes to writing or character development. Um, I think the acting in this whole entire series has been amazing. I mean, obviously Ewan McGregor killed it every single episode. Vivian was so great as Leia. Um, and Hayden being able to play Vader and Anakin and that in-between person, I think, like, Vader needs his own series. He really does. Him and the Inquisitors just going off to kill Force users, I think, is because we know it happens in Rebels. We know that, that he's with the Inquisitors in Rebels. That could be season two. I wouldn't mind it. And then I'll say that, like, I have thought Moses has been doing a great job the entire series with what she had to work with. And I think the last two episodes really showcased her ability to emote um, what I've always been saying with Ewan is that he's able to emote with his eyes and his face fairly easily. You can see worry, you can see fear, you can see happiness, you can see like 
like sometimes the little silliness glint in his eye. And I feel like we kind of got that a lot from Moses in the last two episodes. One with her having that childlike expression when Vader runs her through and then showing her emotion and letting it pour out of her, like all the anger that she's had in her, you know, it finally released itself. And it was a great way to showcase that. And I'm really happy with how that went. Baru was a nice surprise. I like what they did with her character because, you know, you don't get a whole lot from her other than being, you know, like the intermediary between Luke and Owen later on when they're kind of at odds with each other. Um, and I, I don't think in really episode two or episode three of the movies that we get a lot from her either. And then we got that she's, you know, a tough woman. You know, she's living on that plantation. She's taking care of a little boy. She's trying to keep her husband, like, you know, just going. Um, I, I think I think Baru's a, 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 what we got from Baru kind of elevated her character in my mind. Um, I really would have liked to have gotten a little bit more from Joel Edgerton as Owen, but from what we got, it really showcased how much he cares about Luke and how he's willing to protect him at all costs. And, you know, that, that like, he sees Luke as his son. And I feel like that was a beautiful moment to see. Because you don't really get that in episode four. You def I, I have to, like, like, I'm glad that, like, this says, like, part one, two, three, four, and then we could say episode one, two, three, four, because it should distinguish the show from the movies. Um, but in episode four, it just seems like he's, like, this grumpy stepdad or, you know, like, like he's not very likable. And you don't have to make him likable, but it just... It needs to seem like he's not always annoyed with Luke. And I think in this one, it showed that he loves that boy. And I do like that they lied to Luke and said that it was the sand people. Um, because if, if they're, and I, and I don't know, like if he saw her lightsaber or not, but like, if he saw somebody with a red lightsaber, I think that that would imprint on a child's mind. Definitely. Um, so it being the sand people that were coming after them, I thought was, you know, kind of like a great fake out to kind of keep Luke safe, keep him away from harm, but also there's the excuse as to why he needs to stay away and why they're defending their home. All in all, like I, I think the last two episodes is really what sealed the deal for me in this show and saying that it was good. Not that the other episodes were bad, it just, it seemed like it was kind of all over the place. And I know the last two episodes had the same writer, so it was very cohesive and I really like a nice cohesive story. And again, when people get upset that you nitpick things, it's just because the expectations are high. Um, because there's so much love and emotion that's attached to these characters and these stories that you 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 want to feel uplifted but you want to feel devastated like you want all your feelings to be true and genuine you don't want to meh you don't want it to be null and void you want it to be high you want it to be low and you want you want to ride that star wars roller coaster because that's that's where all the good stuff is in in the middle not so much <laughs> we don't need a creamy filling in the middle of obi-wan we, we we need we need all the good stuff Okay, guys, like, subscribe. Um, I probably will be doing Andor. Um, I will not be getting up to film at midnight for that. <laughs> it's It was only, like, four times I've done that for this, and uh, I'm exhausted. So I will be back for more Star Wars. This um, has filled my heart. Uh, the last week was a little hard. It was a little hard. A lot of people were uh, hating on my, my last reaction, and uh, as an emotional person, I, I do take that internally. Um, and I, I will never change my opinion or my voice for anybody, um, with new information, like a new episode, I can revise how I feel about things. Um, but how I feel is how I feel and how you feel is how you feel. Both are valid. No reason to get mad at anybody for anything. All right, guys, I'll see ya.